to set the stage for this talk and to introduce the speaker, I'd like to invite Professor Spentavadia from TIFR. Many of us know him uh, as someone who gave us a talk in the Gurus of Science series, 100 Years of Einstein's Happiest Thought. I see some people here in the audience who've, who were here for that talk. Spenta, please. congratulating uh, the uh, Observer Research Foundation for uh, organizing this talk, a science talk actually. So a lot of discussion in our institute actually last week at lunch, ki why is uh, this organization uh, which is uh, devoted to more social issues uh, organizing a talk on the Higgs boson? Well, I may be able to briefly uh, tell you why a little while later. But uh, I think first, thank you very much, Sudhindra and uh, the staff of ORF for doing this. And uh, also thank you very much, uh, Shirup, uh, for agreeing at uh, short notice. I will introduce Shirup in about two, three minutes. So I, let me begin by saying that the July 4th announcement of the discovery of a Higgs boson by CERN, uh, I think, uh, is a great triumph of uh, theoretical physics, experimental physics, and uh, computing. And uh, I think it's a great step forward for humanity. I mean, I think this is truly a thing you have to celebrate, this type of discovery. It also has a very long history in the sense that the, uh, which also uh, emphasizes the fact that science really has no boundaries. So as you all know, in the early 20th century, Kamerling Owens discovered the phenomenon of uh, superconductivity. Superconductivity is a phenomenon in which uh, if you cool materials below a certain temperature, the current uh, just moves uh, frictionless, and uh, that's superconductivity. No dissipation. About 50 years later, with uh, incessant, uh, uh, in a great struggle, uh, uh, Bardeen, Cooper, and Schrieffer finally actually uh, published a very fundamental paper explaining the theory of superconductivity, uh, in which they introduced the idea of uh, broken symmetry or symmetry breaking so which I will leave Sri Rup for it, to explain it to you. So that was an idea uh, which uh, applies to small chips and solid state stuff in the laboratory. But then there was a very great uh, physicist by the name of uh, Oichiro Nambu uh, from the University of Chicago. I had the great privilege of uh, uh, being in his whereabouts for four years at the University of Chicago. And uh, he also, of course, was awarded the Nobel Prize, I think, in 2007. Uh, so Nambu is the person who said that let the universe, that the universe can be a superconductor. I mean, so look at the leap from just ordinary materials with solid state people look at to the universe. And the fact that the universe is in a state of broken symmetry. And that should be the origin of mass. So the prescient idea, actually, of this entire subject is uh, hidden in a deep understanding of the theory of superconductivity and its application to uh, the universe by Nambu. The rest of the story uh, I will leave for uh, Shirup to tell you, because otherwise I'll be stealing from his lecture. But I'll conclude this uh, short introduction by saying that, uh, you know, while all this is very fantastic and, uh, you know, it enthralls uh, a, a small number of uh, human beings on this planet, uh, because it uh, it fills in a very important gap in the standard model of elementary particles. Why are you as the civic society so, why would you be so interested in all this? 
and I think the answer to this question has been most beautifully uh, given by one of the great physicists of the 20th century, Stephen Weinberg. And it came in the New York Times, but uh, I must congratulate the Indian Express for having reproduced it. This is on the July 17th, uh, uh, some Tuesdays ago. So uh, I'll let you figure it out what he said. But the only thing I want to say is that uh, Weinberg is making a point in this small article about why society should support science. I mean, independent of uh, all the beautiful things it does in our understanding and appreciation of the universe. And it is that uh, there are a lot of spin-offs. And one spin-off that you all must be using every day is the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web was developed at CERN uh, in order to enable uh, high energy physicists around the world to communicate. Okay, and uh, the bylaws of CERN do not allow them to uh, uh, charge any royalty or fees. That's why you're all enjoying the fruits of it, not knowing that it actually was born somewhere in Geneva to fulfill the needs of scientists to communicate. This is just one example. And uh, he ends this uh, little uh, thing by saying that at the end of the 19th century, Physicists in England were exploring the properties of electric currents passing through a near vacuum. Although this was pure science, it led to our knowledge of the electron without which a large part of today's technology would be impossible. If these physicists had limited themselves to work on obvious practical important things, they would have been studying the behavior of steam boilers. So there was a certain uh, uh, spin-off, a spin-off which uh, is so great that it changed our civilization. Uh, this is the work of J.J. Thompson that uh, he's talking about. And I was recently actually uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of the Cavendish Lab uh, in Cambridge. And uh, I took a picture of uh, this plaque, which is on the old Cavendish building. And let me just read out what is written there. I think it's very telling. Here, in 1897, at the old Cavendish laboratory, J.J. Thompson discovered the electron, subsequently recognized as the first fundamental particle of physics. So elementary particle physics began then. And the basis of chemical bonding, electronics, and computing. That is uh, 1897. So with these few words, now, let me introduce uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Shrirup Rai Chaudhary. He's an eminent particle physicist working in the Department of Theoretical Physics at uh, the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. Uh, he is uh, very deeply involved in uh, particle physics related to the Higgs boson and supersymmetry and all the other fundamental things that one will hope to find in the future. And uh, well, he did his PhD on the physics of Higgs bosons in 1994 from the University of Calcutta. So he's very homegrown. He was then a postdoctoral fellow at Tata Institute in Mumbai and then at CERN in Geneva before joining the faculty of the Indian Institute of Technology in Kanpur. So when he was there, we just pulled him out of there, actually, and brought him here because we needed a faculty member in this subject. And he has been with us uh, ever since. So without uh, saying anything more, I'll give it over to Shirop, please.